So the, the foreign policy space and diplomacy is this very strongly, not only male dominated, but like an area of society that is based on a certain school of thinking, like the realist paradigm that yeah, perpetuates or fosters a very kind of violent understanding of how states usually act in their self-interest and what's happening in the world. And it's one that feminists have been challenging, right? So trying to change this, um, what, what I found most helpful to understand um, was the very strong, the, the, the strong historical roots where it's coming from. And then trying on the one hand through like new research, like our, my organization is doing research in advocacy and community and like we re really trying to change the narrative from different angles, like through research, producing new, new knowledge that challenges exactly that and getting other voices in. So all knowledge that usually we create, that um, we produce, is written or informed by, by feminists on the ground. And that's what feminist foreign policy is about. Or if we do advocacy, um, it's, it's essential to really understand where the feminists in, in the current structures are already. Because it, like, it can easily be an overwhelming task, and a very daunting task. Um, so knowing who the key actors are that might be willing or very interested even to, be wor to work with you, um, that is, yeah, that is essential. Because what feminists and foreign policy really want is this holistic change of how we understand security, right? Like it's a huge project. Um, so to be very strategic about it and try to be as effective as possible, you need to kind of attack or like try to find your way in from different um, areas. And that is a process that might take decades because the because of the, how the work is currently being done, that's been built up for decades or even, uh, yeah, hundreds of years even. Um, so, but the most urgent, you were asking about the most urgent, what, what we're seeing today, like these days is, there's like a huge attack on human rights, on women's rights, on political minority rights. Um, I mean, that's always been there in many countries in the world, um, but we see it more and more in the established international organizations. So like, if you look at the United Nations, things are happening there in the Security Council, in the debates um, that you didn't expect like a couple of years ago. And that's because, some leading countries, some leading states, states with veto power in the Security Council, they're bringing their misogynist, for example, agenda into the Council, and they're really challenging and questioning um, wording and agreements that the, the multilateral system had already agreed on, like 20 years ago, for example, um, and they're challenging this now. So what's most urgent for us now, whilst we're trying, to create this mindset shift, which is like a huge task. We currently see ourselves lots in a reactive position and just defending, defending um, what's been built over many years and what's under threat now. Um, Mexico, end of September, announced a feminist foreign policy as well, which would make them the first global south country to do so. Um, but we haven't seen any strategy or like detailed plans yet. Hasn't been produced yet. Um, so there are countries like really championing this field. Um, there's also those countries that usually work really well with civil society, like 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 my organizations and feminist activists, um, and they're great support for us. Um, and for like for me personally, or my organization, Center for Feminist Foreign Policy, we wouldn't be there had it not been for yeah for for foreign ministers like Margaret Wallström. It's so much about like inspiration and. Um, specific individuals really paving the way for others to come after them. Um, I, I also work as an advisor in the Foreign Office in Germany. And whilst Germany does not have a feminist foreign policy at all, there are influential feminist actors within the office. Um, and we know them, we work with them. And there's a good window of opportunity to hopefully change to some extent. Um, I've only had really like one proper day here so far. Um, so it might be a kind of limited view. Um, I feel like walking around here, like the, I think you're getting it like pretty right with the gender balance. Um, I'm not sure, but I haven't like had specific, like strong attention on it. I'm not sure about kind of other di diversity factors, like where, where people are coming from, what their backgrounds are, their religions, their 
um, there, there could be more diversity, I feel. Um, but um, looking at topics and this being a conference on beautiful business, I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised, um, to be invited to talk about foreign policy and diplomacy. Um, and especially on the stage on new power um, and also having yeah, radical activist ideas with my co-speakers in, in that area. Um, that is something that you usually do not see in conference spaces. Um, so yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by that.